All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at data persistent using user defaults. So what is user defaults? Well, user defaults is a system where you can save data types such as bool, dictionary, int, string, data, and arrays. So, I mean, that's neat and all, but why is it useful? Well, rather than tell you here, let me show you an example. Okay, so in this example, I have a pretty basic app. All it does is, is take in some text and add it to a table view cell. So if I were just to type in, okay, it adds it here, you know, some other text and just one more. Okay, so that's fine and all right. But the problem is if I were to close this app, so if I just stop running it and then I open it again, you can see that everything we typed in is gone and that doesn't really make for a useful app. If this was a production app and your user put, toggled on some settings, maybe they toggled dark mode on, maybe they toggled some accessibility features on. And when they reopen your app after they close it, they're going to see that all those, everything they toggled on is been disabled. And so they're going to get upset. They're going to uninstall your app and they're going to give you a one star review. So this is where user defaults comes in to be able to save that stuff. That way, when the user opens back, opens your app back up, it's still, it's still the way they left it. All right. Now that you saw the benefits of it, let's go ahead and take care of the warnings. So there are two things I want to mention. First, you'll want to limit the amount of data that you save to use your defaults. Saving a large amount of data is going to slow down the launch of your app. And also, and I cannot stress this one enough, user defaults are not secure. So avoid storing any sensitive information such as usernames, password, API keys, in-app purchases, all of the sort. Any sensitive information should not be stored in user defaults. Okay, but with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's start setting up our app to use user defaults. First thing I'm going to do is create a brand new file. It's going to be a Swift file. And I'm just going to call this one words. And in this file, we're going to create a class called words. And it's going to conform to NS object and the codable protocol. And we're going to create a variable. We're going to say var used words type string, and then we'll initialize it. So init use words let's type string and then self dot use words equals used words okay so that does it for this file we can move back to our table view controller so now what i want to do is i want to replace this with our file that we just created and sometimes it doesn't appear so what you'll do is you'll just hit command s to save this and now there you go now we successfully have access to it all right now we'll actually create our method to save our data so we'll go down here and create a method called func save open close brackets let json encoder equal json encoder and then we'll do if let saved data equal try json encoder dot encode and then we'll encode the words and then we'll do let default equal user defaults dot standard and then we'll do defaults dot set save data for key and this is when we select our key we'll do something we can memorize we'll do words that's pretty simple and then we'll do else print Failed to save word data. Awesome. Now that we've encoded our data over here in our view to load, we have to decode our data. So we'll do let defaults equal user defaults dot standard. We'll do if let saved words equals defaults dot object for key. And then we're going to input the key that we specified here. So we'll do words as data. 
And we'll do let JSON decoder equal JSON decoder. So remember decoder, not encoder. And then on the bottom here, we'll do do catch block. All right, in our do block, we'll do words equals try JSON decoder dot decode and then do our array of words. Make sure we're grabbing the the class here, not the uh, variable we create up here. And then we'll do dot self from saved words. And now in our catch block, we'll just print out if we get any errors. So do failed to load words. Now all that's left is to go ahead and take care of these two errors we have here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this from here. And we're gonna do something just a slight bit different. We're gonna create a variable here or a constant called let word equal words. And we'll do use words and our input's gonna go here. So the input that we're putting in our text field is gonna go in here. And then we'll do self question mark dot words dot append and then we're gonna append that word. And then the last thing, and this is probably one of the most important parts, is we're gonna do self question mark dot save. We're gonna call that save method that we create down here. That way this actually gets saved inside of user defaults. And then our last error that we have here is that we can assign the value type of words to type string. Okay, so that's a pretty easy fix. So here we'll just go ahead and do let title equal words index path dot row. And then we'll do cell dot text label dot text is title dot used words. And with that, our app is done. So if we go ahead and run this now, we have a blank table view. So we'll just go ahead and add some stuff in here. So we'll do text one, text two, and text three. And if I go ahead and close this app, and then I go ahead and run it again, now you can see our text stays there. So that brings us to the end of today's video, guys. As hopefully you can see how user defaults is very useful. And just to recap again, remember, do not store too much information on user defaults and do not store any sensitive information on user defaults. But with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and drop down in the comments below any questions or recommendations you have for future videos and be sure to hit that subscribe button.